everyone and welcome to this brief video and to the Adobe Spark learning resource that I've prepared for you. I was asked to do this as part of your PG Cert in education and hopefully some of the uh, school nurses who study with us at Greenwich will access this as well. My name is David Evans and I'm Professor in Sexualities and Genders, Health and Wellbeing. If you're not too sure what a Pecha Kucha is, um, you'll notice the slides are transitioning without me even touching anything, not clicking any buttons. Well, a Pecha Kucha means uh, 20 slides, all time for 20 seconds each. So I've prepared something on each one of them, and hopefully I'm just going to be able to confine my little uh, speech to each one of those slides. Back in 1990, there was a film made called Oranges Aren't the Only Fruit. And it was on lesbians, on lesbian relationships and lesbian sex. And it just went to show how um, we don't always know uh, people by a particular word that's being used. And especially in relation to homophobia, that's going to be quite critical for us to explore this. Um, and that's why I'm calling this session not just homophobia. Because what you'll notice on the Spark page is that there's a good critique of the actual word phobia in itself. What do we mean by that? Is it the right word to be using? And also um, the, the first bit of it. Uh, because quite often when people talk about homophobia, they may mean, may mean prejudice and discrimination against gay males, but then there's lesbophobia, uh, transphobia, biphobia. We'll explore all of those as well. And that's what you can expect on your Adobe Spark page. There'll be a really good overview and critique of so many of these words, looking at their origins, how they've developed and how they impact on people, um, especially for you uh, who are working with young people in schools. What qualifies me to talk about this? Well, when I was first asked to do this presentation, I thought, oh, blimey, I don't teach in schools. So what is it they're doing in schools? But I am quite well aware of the relationship and sex education developments that have been happening across the UK over these last few years. But I've also been um, uh, studying homophobia, experiencing it first and studying it for many years, probably most of my life. You'll see a picture of a little baby there. That was me. I was born in the year of the Wolfenden Committee report, which was then enacted 10 years later with the first partial decriminalization of male homosexuality. So when I was a, an, an adolescent and a teenager in school, especially around sports, um, there was a lot of bullying going on. So I didn't get involved terribly well then. And yet later on in life, I really did take to it in a different way. Because one of the problems is that people can internalize it. And a few of these slides are going to show some of the core um, aspects that we'll look at throughout the Spark page. So internalized homophobia can lead to low self-esteem, which often means that people don't give a damn about themselves. They may be desperate for love and attention and yet frightened of rejection. You can see from these pictures that some of the core professions I've had in the earlier part of my life, from nursing, uh, doing a degree in theology, studying to be a priest, then ordained as a Catholic priest, I've been in some institutions where, especially in those days, in the 70s and the 80s, there was a lot of uh, homophobic prejudice and discrimination. And that still carries on now today, as you'll see by that bottom right image. But when you think that um, so many people have had these negative images, and we look at seven pillars on the Spark page, seven pillars of institutional um, uh, influence around things like queer hatred and homophobia, and that can still have an impact, especially on the schoolwork that you're going to be doing with young people now in this day and age. So for some people, if they're internalizing it, the outcome or the course of that can be very negative, especially on their self-esteem. When I was about 14 or 15, I found a little book that you can see on the image here, and that was the first time I ever knew that I was different. Well, no, I knew I was different. There was something different um, as I was growing up, but I didn't have a name or a label for it. Not until I read that book. Now, all these many years later, I can see, especially from somebody like Emily Coulter Thompson, when she talks about people moving from victim status, victim through survivor and on to thriver. Yeah, I'm really happy to say that I feel as if I'm an absolute thriver now. You'll see here two um, important awards indeed, and the photograph is with my husband and myself. Never thought I'd be saying that. 
But back in 2014, I became a National Teaching Fellow, and then Her Majesty the Queen appointed me as an OBE. And for so much of the teaching that I do on sexual health and well-being, so much of that does concern stigma, prejudice, discrimination, so challenging those various phobias. I've also been very lucky as well by writing some informal blogs um, about gay issues, about homophobia, um, about HIV in the early days, because that's been a huge part of my teaching. Then I've been interviewed on three occasions now, once with R Rupert Everett on gay lifestyles and twice on Princess Diana in relation to HIV and the stigmas around that, which obviously in the early days of AIDS were very much focused on gay males and um, th you'll see from the list here there are lots of opportunities I've had in talking about young people and sexual health young people and sexualities so homophobia has been a core of the teaching I've done over quite a few decades but also uh, to young people's workers even though I'm not myself in schools and I couldn't believe it a few months ago at the LGBT staff forum um, I was nominated as the senior academic. I don't know whether that means because I'm a professor or am I just the oldest one in the village? I'm not too sure about that. Um, but I can't imagine that having come from the, the school and upbringing I had. And then again in 2016, um, by just championing um, equality and diversity, I helped one young person, a student at the university, to really challenge the homophobic past he'd grown up in, and he actually nominated me for a Vice-Chancellor's Award there. So for each and every one of you, becoming allies and role models to other people yourselves. And this is where it's going to be over to you now. So you'll notice that I use the term queer hatred, um, probably rather than homophobia, so we look at that on the Spark page, but this is very much about inspiring all of you for you to go on and inspire that next generation whether that means unpicking the phobias um, challenging them standing up being an ally uh, for diversity um, especially having a voice against discrimination so um, however you identify or don't identify with your own sexual orientations that does, that's not really the point it's a case here of standing up for people and especially standing up for the equality of rights for all people irrespective of nothing at all and this is where we move over now to your spark page and that's where you can go on to that and look at loads more resources on there and then hopefully share those when we meet together for your online workshop okay so i'm hoping that this is going to have a wider impact for you and certainly give you some food for thought in challenging prejudice and discrimination thanks <laughs>